The scripture says, love your neighbor as yourself. But in these times, we see how we need to realize that people don't love you. Whether you are a believer or not. This world is filled with inhabitants, filled with people that don't love you. Whether they know you or not. Observe the increase in lawlessness, the increase in violence, the increase in theft, the increase of rape, the increase of road rage, the increase of someone taking another person's life senselessly. People don't love people. That's what it is. For one to do the things that they do is because they don't love you. Yet, knowing that, no one is afraid to transgress. Why aren't people afraid to transgress against another? You should be afraid. To transgress against the neighbor, especially in these times, because that neighbor whom you transgress against don't love you. And because of the offense, they will recompense you. Who has the eyes to see that? Who has the ears to understand and hear that? See, the curse of a lot of people here on this earth, man and woman, is that many have become too comfortable in transgressing against their neighbor. And in those transgressions, their history of transgressing against people in their pride and their haughtiness and their vanity and their hatred. For many years, the people whom they have transgressed against have shown them mercy and not retaliating against them as far as unaliving them, if you know what I mean. But that day will come where that mercy, which God held back the multitude of people whom this individual have transgressed, will be cut off. And that person who have been so comfortable in transgressing the neighbor will meet up with the wrong one. And that wrong one will cause their soul to depart from this earth. I say that because I have heard so much news about transgression, one transgressing another, and the other who was transgressed against was highly offended, filled with hatred and unlove, no mercy retaliated against that individual because of the transgression. So shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Behold, a people shall come people are not loving each other in these times, and it's going to grow colder. It is wise that we live in love 
for real. And if you are one of those who transgress without thought, in pride and arrogancy, whatever it is that it may be that you transgress against one, it is wise to repent. It is wise to change your heart. It is wise to change your mind. It is wise to change your dealings and your actions. For if you are still here on this earth today, it is because the Lord has allowed mercy. Yet if one continues in this same transgression, I mean examples like road rage. You have some people on the road and they are villains towards others. There was one incident where an individual was driving in the fast lane and another drove behind him basically tailgating him and beeped the horn at the one that was in the fast lane. I guess the other one was going too slow for him. I don't know. But the one who beeped his horn at him did not know that that day was going to be the last day that he was going to be alive on this earth. Again, people are offended. Nowadays, the love has grown cold. Iniquity has a bound and will continue to abound overflowing. We need to be careful. As scripture says, you need to walk circumspectly. Not only observing your surroundings, observing your heart, your ways, your speech, how you treat another, because for so many years, the Lord could very well have mercy over you. And in your transgressing against your neighbor repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly to the point your heart has grown cold. And you've become arrogant. And this has developed into your character. As you have no fear when it comes to disrespecting your neighbor. Yet the Lord says, love them as yourself. No longer are people showing mercy to another who has transgressed against them. I've seen situations where people were robbing another. And the robber, the thief, was actually a child. Yet... Did the victim show mercy to that child? No. A person thought this was going to be a robbery. They were going to get what they got and go home and spend it whatever. Not so. Mercy was cut off. You transgressed against your neighbor. Another thing that they can run someone off the road or zoom past someone and brake check them or flick them off or throw a drink at their car. Now that I speak of that, there was another incident where a woman was outside of her car talking to a friend. Another car sped by down the street. Maybe going 55 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour on a 25 mile an hour zone. The individual outside had a drink and threw, decided to throw her drink at that car that was speeding. 
not knowing that that day would be the end of her life. That car turned back around, didn't show mercy, didn't brush it off. People don't love you. We live in an ungodly world, a world full of sin and of, and of offense and of darkness and of hatred. And to say that we live our lives unwise is unwise. People think that you can just speak to someone any kind of way and see another day. In these times, not so. Many think they can flick someone off, curse someone, speak ill behind their back, grow in rage and speak in rage and in hatred in someone's face, whatever it may be, and that individual will not do anything. We realize as darkness is growing, iniquity is abounding. People don't have God's spirit to restrain the evil. So when one is in offense or someone has offended them, it is the sin within that individual that has stirred that person up. And where is the Holy Ghost? Where is God's word for them to meditate on to deny themselves? Carry the cross. Follow Jesus. There's none of that. So the thing is, when someone offends me, I go back to think on such. And I say in my mind and my heart, I am your mercy. feeling bad, feeling sorry for them because I know that the character that this individual has will cost them their life someday. The mercy will be cut off someday but not through me. I say I am your mercy. But there's going to come another who will not be your mercy. It is sad. It is a reality. It is increasing. It is abounding. And I said, if this is the beginning, we haven't seen nothing yet. Christ has given us a commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. And people are not abiding by that. Many who profess themselves as Christians are not abiding in that. But are transgressing. And with that transgression, it's like the law. You transgress the law, you die. And this is what is happening. People are dying. Having transgressed the commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. It's a reality. It's sad. So when you're out and about dealing with different types of people, whatever situation, whether you are at home, whether you are with family, whether you are out in public, whether you are driving, whatever it is you need to remember to have patience with people. No matter what they do, pray in the Spirit and ask God. Help 
me to love my neighbor. Help me to have patience. Meditate on his word. Stay in prayer. Give me the wisdom to speak to an individual in their anger, in their offense, in their anxiety. What I see nowadays is people don't care anymore. They will allow that sin to take priority in their lives, to fulfill the desire to recompense one that has transgressed against them because they love themselves. We live in a life where men and women love themselves so much, worship themselves so much, to where if you transgress against them, it costs you, it would cost you your life because you offended something, someone they love, and that is themselves. This is why it's important that we ask God for wisdom. Lord, in this difficult situation, help me. It's not hard to love your neighbor, though. Put yourself in their situation. If you did something wrong, acknowledge that wrong to them and deeply and sincerely apologize. Humble yourself. Think twice. Don't allow the flesh to control because it will be the works of the flesh and you responding to the flesh that will cause your life to end abruptly. And it all could have been prevented. As the Lord said to me years ago when I was in prayer, just randomly said, Let me think about it because I forgot. It was years ago. He said, There are the most careless people in the world. Again, there are the most careless people in the world. And that is true. Careless. Not walking in carefulness and sobriety and the things in which you say, the things in which you do. We even read in scriptures where we are told if we offended someone, if we done someone wrong, that we are to quickly go and try to reconcile with that individual. Least X and X and X happen. This and this and that happen. Whether you were thrown into prison, whether your neighbor seeks vengeance is written throughout scriptures. Those who tend to offend, it has to come to a time where you need to repent. The Lord has shown mercy up to this time. If not, you don't know. The very next person you so happen to offend out of your flesh will be the one to end your life here on this earth. Mercy cut off. You offender of the neighbor. Period. For imagine 
If Jesus was here on this earth, if God was here on this earth, disguised as man, if the holy angels Michael, Gabriel, and the others whose names we don't know was here on this earth disguised, mingled among us, inter intercounting, inter interacting with mankind, interacting with you, but you didn't know. And you being that transgressor of your neighbor, they so happened to do something that you did not like, whether it was on the road, driving too slow, cutting in front of you, not thinking anything. Whether they didn't meet your desire, your expectation, whatever it is, to the point you were angry, that you became rude. That you begin to talk about them, against them, flickering your middle finger, speeding off. Basically, not only would you have transgressed against man, but if it was God, you transgressed against the Lord. You transgressed against Christ. You transgressed against the holy angels. But God being God, Jesus being himself, you would have had mercy. But your mercy will be cut off because we live in a world where these people ain't Christ. They ain't God. They ain't the holy angels. They ain't the saints of God. But they are the children of the wicked one. And we know the deeds and the works of the children of the wicked one. Look at the life of Cain. He rose up and slew his brother. We look at the children of Belial, which is spoken throughout scriptures. They won't show you no mercy, doing the works of their father. But I thought I'd put this video out every time I see an individual transgress against me. I don't hold it against them. I feel sorry and I think on them. And I say, I am your mercy. But there's going to come a time where someone's going to come and you're so comfortable in your transgression, you're so comfortable in your sins, that it has become your character. This is who you are. And you're going to run up to the wrong one. And your mercy, which I've shown you and many others, by the grace of God, will be cut off. And between those times, God has called repentance. But the pride has reached its max. The arrogancy has reached its max. The hatred has reached its max. And the axe was ready to be laid. The sickle was ready to be thrown at the root of that tree. Every tree that don't bear good fruit, hey, cut off. I thought I'd share that with you all. Think on it. If it's you, the Lord is speaking to your heart. We are commanded to love our neighbors as ourselves. Have patience. Be merciful. Think on what the Lord would do and not what your flesh would do. Overcome evil with good. Ask the Lord to restrain the wickedness within your flesh that you may respond in God's grace. Y'all take care in Jesus' name.